what are the Noahide laws? Um, I've been hearing about this with increasing frequency from people, my viewers and things, and I even got a letter in the mail from some uh, crazy lost nut saying that I need to become a Noahide, and I'm thinking, a what? <laughs> I don't know what this is, and, and I just did a quick Google search for it. You can do that, and it comes up, and I thought, well, they seem okay. I don't understand what the issue is, and but I just keep seeing it. My viewers out there, you keep saying, brother, please look into it. It's very serious. And so I took some time to do some research into this whole thing. And uh, yeah, it's very serious. And that's why my sermon today is going to be on the seven Noahide laws or a rejection of Jesus Christ. And in fact, the Antichrist system. Uh, this, this whole concept of Noahide laws, 100% satanic. I'm going to prove it in this study. It's a complete and total lie. No basis in scripture for it. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Well, what about the... Uh, watch the study. Again, if you're looking for a little five-minute you know, minute junk food study or something, well, this isn't the place for you. Okay, this is a Bible-believing channel. We search the scriptures to see if these things are so. So some nut comes out and says you need, have to become a Noahide. Well, um, I look at my King James Bible first and foremost. Okay, it's not in there. All right, what does this mean? I'll go to the next level, all right? I'll study your materials. Give me your materials and I'll study it. I'm not afraid of the uh, materials of my enemies. They're afraid of my materials. That's why they don't mention me and things if they refer to me and everything else. And they just say I'm a heretic and don't watch his stuff. He's crazy and whatever else. Um, so talking about enemies, here's a good article right here. I'm going to be putting this up on screen from Boston College. Center for Christian slash Jewish Learning. Uh, what better place to go to to learn about the Noahide laws than to the Jesuits? Hmm. So let's read here. Um, put it up on the screen for you. Jewish understandings of the other, an annotated source book. Over the millennia, Jews have sought to understand their relationships to their Gentile, i.e. non-Jewish neighbors. Uh, many Jewish teachings generated texts that subsequent generations accepted as authoritative. Despite their authority, these texts often offer a variety of opinions. As Jews seek to understand their place in today's multicultural world, they do so in dialogue with these texts. I hate that word. <laughs> Some of these texts are difficult. The annotations accompanying them explore ways of reading and understanding them as historical, theological, and legal texts, and as received texts today. Sourcebook Home. To view Hebrew and Greek texts, you must have the fonts available on your computer. Fonts may be downloaded from that website. Okay, now we get into it. Noahide, Covenant, Theology, and Jewish Law. All right, and there you have a bunch of uh, Hebrew, I guess is what that is. But it says here, The descendants of Noah were commanded with seven precepts to establish laws and the prohibitions of blasphemy, idolatry, adultery, bloodshed, theft, and eating the blood of a living animal. Babylonian Talmud, Sanhedrin 56a. Uh-oh. So you mean to tell me that these Noahide laws aren't from the Bible? Oh, no, they're found in the Bible. Which Bible? Well, they, they're based on the Torah. The Torah of the Bible? Or are they based on the Torah that's written about in the Talmud? The latter. Um, and this is, this is a very clever deception. That's why I know Satan is behind it. It's very clever. Let's go through this here. Commentary. The Bible presents a predominantly binary picture of humanity. <laughs> That's not a Bible word, by the way. Human is not a Bible word. In your King James Bible, the new ones put it in. New ones that come from the Jesuits many times. With the Jewish people in covenant with God on one side and the idolatrous nations of the world on the other. However, rabbis of the Talmudic period, approximately 200 to 600 CE. No, it's AD, you stupid devils. It's not the common era. It's Anno Domini, which I know even the Catholics came up with, but now the, the Jesuits kind of, let's get away from that whole thing. Yeah, uh, they hate Jesus Christ. Um, 200 to 600 AD seized upon one aspect of the biblical narrative that does not fit into this neat binary universe. While the Bible portrays the stranger as isolated individuals in Jewish society, the Talmud expanded the idea of the stranger and conceptualized it into a broad legal and moral category. You wouldn't be saying uh, combining church and state, would you? A religious political system? Huh, like the Vatican. 
Yeah, the two swords of the Vatican, the temporal and the spiritual. And the Jews are doing the same thing with the Jesuits supporting it. Huh, isn't that interesting? Hmm, almost like they're joined together. They're part of the same system, the fifth kingdom, the iron Romans and the miry clay Jews, Israel, the mingled Jews. Hmm, almost. <laughs> Actually, it is. Um, continuing here, based on the post-Deluvian covenant God makes with Noah and his descendants, Genesis 9, 8 through 17, the Babylonian Talmud, Avodah Zarah 64b, interpreted the stranger to be all Gentiles who accept the seven Noahide commandments con constituting, uh, or constituting, I'm sorry, constituting the basic laws of morality. Um, absolute nonsense. The basic laws of morality are defined by the Ten Commandments. I'll show you that here in a little bit. And the Ten Commandments lead you to Jesus Christ. I'll show you that too. But here they are. The positive injunction to set up courts that justly enforce social laws. Political, religious system that the Jesuits write about. I have their book right down here. The church teaches all their anathemas, a book of curses, like witches do, you know. But it says, Documents of the Church in English Translation by Jesuit Fathers of St. Mary's College. And I've showed this thing in multiple studies. It talks about the spiritual and the temporal swords, how that the, uh, the government is controlled by the church, exactly as we're reading about here in this article about the uh, Noahide laws. Let me put that back on the shelf here. I'll, I'll get to it later. Um, the Prohibition of Blasphemy. Uh, example given there of intolerance of worshiping the one God of the universe. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's where this whole thing is very wicked and very satanic. Because the Jews, in their hatred of Jesus Christ, and the Jesuits in their hatred of Jesus Christ, you know, the Society of Jesus, kind of funny, but they actually hate Jesus Christ and they hate those who follow him. In their hatred, they want to actually make a political, religious system in the future whereby you can be charged for idolatry if you believe in Jesus Christ. That's what this whole thing is. Spoil the, the whole thing or whatever else here. We'll get to it. I'll build up to it. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you what the study's about right now. This whole study, all my notes right here, showing from the scriptures, showing from their sources right here, they want to bring in a political, religious system that will put you to death by the sword, by decapitation for believing in Jesus Christ, believing that he's God. We have to fight this stuff. And I'm going to show you how in the study. The prohibition of idolatry. Again, they would say that the uh, Jesus is an idol. It's a false idol, the Trinity thing, which the Trinity is a false idol. It's not what the Bible teaches. King James Bible teaches the Godhead doctrine. All right. Completely different than the Trinity. The prohibitions of grave sexual immorality, such as incest and adultery, even though the people you would bring out a lot of the pornography and perversion and everything else. The prohibition of murder. Yeah, they don't do anything like that. The prohibition of theft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, those people you they don't steal from anybody. The prohibition of eating the limb of a live animal, which is a paradigm for cruelty. Uh, Jewish law grants all non-Jews who accept these laws of civilization, or yeah, civilization, social and theological rights everywhere, as well as residency rights in a Jewish religious polity. As a result, the Talmudic tradition split the Gentile world into two subcategories, immoral persons who reject the Noahide commandments and to whom tolerance is generally not extended. Did you hear that? Did you see that? You don't extend tolerance to these people, these immoral people that reject the Noahide laws. So you're considered immoral if you're a Bible-believing Christian. See how warped and satanic these people are? See how evil these people are? One's practicing usury. One's practicing all kinds of sexual perversion. I mean, do, does anybody out there, any of my viewers, do you look at, at Israel as a great shining light, a city that's set on a hill like it's supposed to be? with great moral laws and things like that? No, it's a cesspool of filth and sin. Sodomy's legal over there and everything else. It, all the pride parades and everything that they do. But they're going to tell us that we're immoral.
because we reject their system, right? But that's the first group. The second group, Gentiles who accept the laws of the Noahide covenant, who are regarded positively, whom Jews are obligated to protect and sustain. <laughs> Excuse me? Protect and sustain? We can't protect ourselves or sustain ourselves? Well, not in the nightmare world that they want for us. All the Gentiles stuffed in little compact cities, getting universal basic income with central bank digital currencies, and you get rewards for being good, a good little slave. You can't go out and live in the country, but we'll let you go out occasionally. We'll have you go to special uh, specified trails that we control through the Bank of New York, like we have here in northern Maine in my area, literally. I've shown some of this stuff. Um, why do you have New York City financing trails out here? Because they're getting ready to be able to reward their slaves. That's what they're writing here in this Jesuit paper. I just showed it to you. Oh, we can't have people living out there anymore. No, unless you're uh, part of our system. And, and then you can have, uh, you know, you can run a lodge for us or something, a, a wilderness lodge. And then we'll, the good people that are doing good and whatever else, working for Big Brother, you know, 1984, the whole, you know, Orwell thing. Um, then they get to come out be, as a reward, you know, and you'll get an extra piece of meat, you know. Hmm. Dietary kosher laws imposed on Gentiles. We're going to protect and sustain you. Oh, I think that you've had enough meat. Oh, guns? Oh, my, no. You can't have a gun. That's very dangerous. We'll protect you. We have you in our smart city now, and, and we'll watch over you. Big Brother's here to help. <laughs> oh, give me liberty or give me death. You wicked devils. And I don't hate Jewish people, by the way. Let me just make that clear. So don't even try to put it on me that I'm anti-Semitic because I'm not. I'm a radical supporter of real Jews in Israel. As such, classical Judaism subscribed to a double covenant theory. Jews have the Torah covenant of 613 commandments and all Gentiles have a covenant of seven Noahide mitzvot. Each covenant... <clears throat> being valid um, for its respective adherence. Con conventionally, only those accepting the covenant are termed B'nai Noah, sons of Noah or Noahides. Noahides are not expected to convert to Judaism, for they have an independently authentic covenant that governs, governs a valid way of life. Noahides are accorded positive status in this worldview to the extent that Gentiles who faithfully keep the Noahide com commandments are regarded as more beloved by God i.e. more valued than Jews who violate the fundamentals of their covenant of 613 commandments. This is clearly evidence, evidenced by the Talmudic and medieval rabbinic claim that righteous Gentiles have a share in the world to come, i.e. salvation earned by their exemplary lives on earth, whereas Jews who commit grievous sins do not earn that status. Uh, doesn't it sound like work salvation? Yeah. Yeah. By grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Not of works. No, I'm sorry. It's by their salvation is earned by their exemplary lives on earth. Your best life now. Joe Osteen. You see how satanic this is? They're literally sneaking up behind Christians and saying, we're going to take it all from you and force you to live in our little cities and everything else. Will protect and sustain you. Your damnation is just. There is debate in Jewish law as to how and when humanity became aware of the Noahide commandments and whether these obligations are exclusively moral or also entail theological commitments. Normative Talmudic opinion. Woo, that's impressive. Sanhedrin 56a through 57a derives the commandments from Genesis 2.16. But the generally, and it, which doesn't say anything at all of the kind about uh, Noahic, uh, the Noahide stuff. Um, but the generality of the verse and rival opinions citing the other texts uh, indicate that this text is probably only post facto support for the concept. No explicit universal revelation of these commandments occurs in the Bible. At least they're telling the truth there. So, and some Jewish thinkers maintained that they were derived from reason or natural law. Look out for that. 
actually saw there's a, a video clip out there of uh, Tucker Carlson. He's talking to some Jewish comedian, and, and he basically says, oh, I love these no-hide laws. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. This guy's deceiving conservatives all the time. Tucker Carlson is. And I think it's kind of like natural law, isn't it? Where do you think he gets that from? Little uh, Kabbalah boy there. Getting back to it. Um, Mammonides cannot serve God or mammon. I'll just say mammonides. It's probably pronounced differently, but I'll call it mammonides because that's what it is. Mammonides maintains that six of the prohibitions were given to Adam, and after the flood, Noah was given the additional obligation not to eat blood or a limb from a living animal. The seventh obligation constitutes a constraint upon the killing of animal life for food, a license first given after the flood. Okay? Um, so they're going to be saying things about uh, killing animals. And, you know, I agree that there are prohibitions in the New Testament. We'll look at these about not eating the blood of a living animal. Don't eat a raw animal. Just go out and shoot something and pull its leg off and start eating it or something. That's what, you know, predators do that. We're not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to get the blood out before you eat it, okay, or cook the blood. In other words, um, that's, you know, given before the law in the book of Genesis, then it's given under the law, Leviticus, and then after the law in the book of Acts. You're not supposed to eat blood. Very serious thing that's there in multiple dispensations. Okay, continuing. There is significant rabbinic and scholarly debate whether Noahide law ever did or can today constitute an actual basis for morality and an adjudication of Gentile society, a legal category for Jewish jurisprudence to deal with Gentile residents in Jewish society, or only a theoretical category necessary for Jewish theology. Uh, medieval and modern rabbinic opinion is divided on whether Jews have an obligation to force Gentiles to observe Noahide standards with Mammonides, Mammonides Misha, Mishnah Torah, Law of Kings 8 verse 10, also known as stupid nonsense, um, <clears throat> maintaining that Jews are obligated to enforce these standards on Gentiles and Mammonides, commentary on Genesis 26 verse 5, disagreeing. Uh, rabbinic opinion also is divided as to what extent idolatry is at all applicable applicable in post-Talmudic times, see Novak below, with a body of rabbinic opinion maintaining that even Gentiles who worship via idolatrous forms lack idolatrous intent, um, see cats below, and another body of rabbinic opinion maintaining that biblical and Talmudic idolatry is not to be found among any people with whom Jews come in contact in the Occident. These questions have significant implications for Jewish Gentile relations, um, both inside the land of Israel, where Jews have political control, which is fine. They have the right to make their own laws in their own land. That's fine. And in diaspora, where such control is lacking. Diaspora means where they've been cast out. They've been, you know, kicked out of their land by God. You know, the God of the Old Testament. Get out of the land. <laughs> Scatters them throughout all the heathen nations out there. And then they try to take over the heathen nations. They're allowed to use usury in their own land, but not when they get to other nations. And yet they do it all the time. Somehow they're not worried too much about disobeying the 613 commandments. Uh, they're very wicked people. Very. And of course, you know, they mingle themselves with other people. So you're, you're so holy and so wonderful and so much higher than the Gentiles. And why are you marrying with them? The concept of the sanctified Noahide covenant provides a philosophic, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, hello, and legal foundation for some form of Jewish theological pluralism and theory of legitimate religious particularism. <laughs> oh, <woo. laughs> These people, it just cracks me up. You can't just be simple and get the truth out. You have to come out with as much, you know, flowery, scholarly language as you can. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ spoke plainly when he was here on the earth. You know, God manifest in the flesh. God, Almighty God, when he was here on the flesh, in the flesh as Jesus Christ. Um, the body of God is Jesus. The soul of God, of Jesus, his soul is God the Father. And his spirit is the Holy Spirit. Very simple. Man is made in the image of God after his likeness. Man has a body, soul, spirit. Tripartite being. Where did we get it from? God. Three parts, one body, one being, one person. If you don't get it, 
Uh, you don't understand that? Well, you either you haven't studied it or you're lost. Study it, and uh, the Lord will reveal it to you if you're saved. And if you say, well, I've studied it, and I don't, I don't believe it. It's a heresy. Then enjoy your time in hell for all of eternity because that's where you're headed. Very simple. Very simple. I have an authoritative standard. The Word of God. The greatest book that's ever been written. Right here. Not the Hebrew Scriptures. Not the Greek Scriptures. <gasps> double heresy. No, it's not a double heresy. It's scientifically verified. Okay? In the Old Testament times, God's dealing with one nation. The nation of Israel. Gives them His Word in Hebrew. They go against the Lord. And the Lord says, Okay, I'm going to disperse you throughout all the nations and things. They uh, are there in Israel yet but they don't have control over their, over their land. When Jesus Christ shows up on the earth, uh, they're under Roman occupation. And instead of saying, our Messiah is here, Jesus, our Messiah has come, here he is, he's healing people, raising people from the dead, restoring the eyesight, he's doing all these signs to prove that he is God, only God could do those things. But yet, the nation of Israel as a whole, not individual Jews, Again, watch out for that. You can't just condemn all Jews. That's what the anti-Semitic people do, and that's why I hate that whole system. Don't condemn all Jews, because there are some Jews that did follow Jesus Christ, and that did become his disciples, and that did go on to be called Christians first at Antioch. They were Jewish disciples, not Gentiles. All right. And in the future, there will be Jews that get saved. A remnant will be saved. And then the Lord will bring in the new covenant to those Jews, and then they'll go into the millennial kingdom. But you see, the Jesus Christ rejecting Talmudic uh, mingled Jews, the Pope's Jews, that's why I call them papal Juden. Juden is the word German word for Jews. Um, <clears throat> but uh, those people right there, they reject Jesus Christ, so they say, you know what, we'll bring in the kingdoms. God won't bless us with wealth anymore like he did to King Solomon and King David. Solomon's father. So we'll come up with our own way of making money. Gold and silver comes to those as a blessing from God. That's God's money. God says, I'll give you gold and silver. That's at the judgment seat of Christ. Again, you get somebody that says, I don't see any intrinsic value to gold and silver. Well, then you reject God and you reject the Bible. What are you going to do? Get up there to heaven and say, I don't see any intrinsic value in this whole city made out of gold. I don't see anything. <laughs> There's no worth up here. It's just a yellow rock. Like Dave the Devil Ramsey likes to say. Uh, no, gold and silver has real value because God's word said so. And thousands of years of history prove it. But the Jews, they say, we don't want the gold and silver anymore. We're going to use usury. We're going to make debt through our banking system. And one of the oldest banks, Bank of New York. I wonder who's involved with that one. And I did some studies on it. You can watch my videos I just put out over the last week or two showing the corruption of the Bank of New York financing both sides of wars, getting people killed, um, which the Bible condemns, you know, killing the innocent and their blood being used to make you wealthy. And yet the people you didn't do it all the time. Very sick. And then they want to impose their ways on us. And I'm supposed to trust these people. And they want to bring in their kingdom and their king that comes, their Mashiach that comes is going to be the Antichrist or when the Mashiach comes, then we'll see if we should kill people or not. We'll see if we're going to interpret this thing, you know, completely as it is. And I'll just show you here. This is, I'll be showing this in more detail here in a little bit. But just to fast forward to this, I heard about this and I checked it out. This is their website, noahide.org. Their website. I'll show you a little bit of stuff about that here in a little bit. But the last one... Number 16, that the court is to administer the death penalty by the sword, i.e. decapitation. Right there it is, highlighted in orange. You can read it yourself. And I'll be showing you the screenshots from their website, proving it here in a little bit. It's the Antichrist system, see? So this dream that these people have for the future is literally the Antichrist system that you read about in the book of Revelation, where the Lord says, okay, I'm putting an end to this whole thing. So are we supposed to fight it? Um, I'll be honest, I, I didn't even see it. I didn't even, I mean, people's Noahide, Noahide, okay, I don't know what that is because it's not in the scriptures. I don't, I don't know what that thing is all about. And people, you know, brother, look into it. Like I said at the beginning of the study and I looked into it and it, whoa, this is really bad. This is something we need to fight hard. 
we need to get the truth out there about this Noahide system. Um, brother, sister, uh, there are some things that you need to fight. You need to get out of your little comfortable little bubble there and whatever else, and you need to start to make um, raise a stink about this. Because they would like to bring this thing in before we leave. And if we do nothing, they might just happen. Or that might just happen. Kind of test it out a little bit, you know. Let's put some of those Christians to death. Um, no thank you, not on my watch. Turn to Acts chapter 15. This is one of the places I, I saw this guy. He's a Jew now, and he was used to be a Gentile pastor, but now he's a Jew. And um, he's a Noahide. <laughs> um, oh, you know, you can, you can qualify to be a son of Noah instead of an immoral heathen. Um, hey, stupid, we're all sons of Noah. Japheth, Ham, and Shem. You're descended from one of those three sons. <laughs> Acts chapter 15, this guy said, oh, he said, the, the Noahide laws, he said, they can be found in, in the New Testament in the book of Acts chapter 15. There they discussed the Noahide laws. No, they didn't. Acts chapter 15. And by the way, if you're an atheist and you're watching this whole thing, you better pay attention as well. Because you see, I'm actually trying to stop a political religious system from coming in. I am. I'm fighting it. I don't want the government to be controlled by religion. That's a terrible thing. Because I know my history. I know the history of my people, Bible-believing Christians. We get tortured when that type of thing happens. And you as an atheist, join the church or you're a heretic. You're either with us or you're with the terrorists. Remember that? George W. Bush. Look it up. Acts chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Then why did Jesus die on the cross? <laughs> trying to make the cross of Christ of none effect is what they're trying to do. Condemned over in the book of Galatians. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no dis small dissent, dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy, joy unto all the brethren. See, here you're dealing in the book of Acts. There's still, it's, you know, Christianity at that point is still very much a Jewish thing, right? So again, if you're Jewish out there and you're watching this, understand that the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Acts chapter 11, verse 26, they were Jewish disciples. Hmm. Verse 4, And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done, uh, had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Does it say anything about the Noahide laws there? Why is it called keeping the law of Moses? Because that's the only law in the Bible. There's no other law. There's no Noahide laws. It's the law of Moses. I'll show you that here in a little bit. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there, wrote, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by the Noahide laws. Uh, no, it's actually by faith. The just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. But unless you want to trust yourself. See, then you teach that uh, Hashem... Uh, the name, it's literally what it means. I'll talk about that in another study. Um, Hashem, he's a good guy and he loves everybody and he's not mad at people and you don't have to feel that you're a sinner and whatever and you just follow the Noah Hyde laws. You, if you're a good person, you'll go to heaven when you die. Then where does faith come in at? <laughs> Verse 10. Look at this. Now therefore, why tempt ye God? 
to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Notice, grace, verse 9, faith. By grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves. That's why they try to get rid of Paul too, by the way. Paul was a heretic. The other disciples didn't like him. Um, but the problem was it's Peter talking right there in the passage. Uh-oh. Peter and Paul saying the same thing? Preaching the same gospel? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of a problem for you idiots out there that believe that Paul was an, a false apostle that Peter hated. <laughs> no, he wasn't. No. Peter's saying the same thing. Grace through faith, not of works. But notice what it says there. Verse 10, such a classic thing here. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God? Jesus Christ comes down, God manifests in the flesh, purchases us with his blood, sheds his blood, dies a terrible death on the cross. And you go, huh, that's really something. God, look at how good I am. I'm a good person. I follow the Noahide laws. I'm a good, I'm a moral, upstanding individual. You're tempting God. It's a dangerous thing to do, to tempt the Lord. And that's why God's mad with these mingled papal Juden. Because you see, they're tempting him. That's why there's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming. It's not for the church. It's for the nation of Israel. And there's a remnant that will be saved. And they will see the revelation of Jesus Christ. They'll see the signs and the wonders. They'll see Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses of Revelation 11. And they will be coming back and they'll be doing miracles turning water into blood and doing many of the things that they did. Coming Exodus, I did a study on that a while back, many years ago, showing that a lot of the things that Moses and Elijah did, they'll be doing again in the book of Revelation. That's how you know the two witnesses are them. That and a whole lot of other reasons. Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah showed up there. So, but anyhow, we um, won't get into that whole thing right now, but they're going to be there. And I mean, it's just so funny, you know, oh, are you Torah observant? We have 613 commandments, you know, and all of a sudden you have Moses show up. Hey, Moses, are you Torah observant? <laughs> I wrote the Torah. What are you talking about? Going up to all these rabbis there, you know, follow the Noahide laws, you know, keep the 613 commandments. Noah's going to be coming saying, bunch of hypocrites. I'm here. I'm Moses. You're not keeping the laws. And what does Peter say? Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You see, the Lord wanted to show that self-righteousness doesn't work. That's why he had people back in the past, they were justified by works, faith and works, throughout the Old Testament. If you do this, you're unclean until the evening. You have to go and you have to commit this sacrifice. And you have to go do this thing here and wash yourself and purify yourself and get the blood on the right ear like Trump did and, and all the other stuff. And you're, you know, doing all these different things. Works. Salvation. It was there in the Old Testament. There's an element of faith. And then certainly grace is there. God has to have grace for anybody. Okay, grace is always there. But the whole point is, it's an element of grace and faith, yes, but it was works. They had to do works in the Old Testament. And God did that specifically to destroy the concept of self-righteousness. So you can look back then and you can look at the, you know, the things are written aforetime back here in the Old Testament are written for our learning, the Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians. But you can look at that and you can say, did anybody really even keep that? What's the most, one of the most distressing things that you see reading through the Old Testament, and you see good king, bad king. Good king, bad king. And then it's bad king, bad king, bad king, and a slightly good one, and then back to bad again. <laughs> They're not keeping the commandments. And do you think that these Jews in Israel right now or the ones in New York City, you think that they're keeping the commandments? I'm <clears throat> I'm Torah observant. I'm, I'm not like the Gentiles. I'm Torah observant, observant. We want to keep you safe and we're going to protect you. Hey, how are my stocks doing again? <laughs> my stock's in the banking system and, uh, you know, making all this money off these people. Stupid Gentiles, look at them going by with a, everybody's in debt. <laughs> I'm getting lots of money. 
How's that working out for you with the unjust weights and, and measures again there? We just, you know, we'll talk about that. We'll just, you know, meet with our other Masonic brethren and our Catholic friends, and we'll all just say, talk about Jewish and Christian Learning Center, and we'll just shake each other's hands, you know, and we'll make sure that we don't show the Masonic, you know, shakes. We'll just kind of cover up, show you that later. Go down to verse 22. So what is decided here at the council in the book of Acts chapter 15? Go down to verse 22. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. There's no command from Scripture on this. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Peter writing. Peter writing again. Beloved Paul. Don't believe these liars out there that come out and say, oh, you know, they hated Paul. He was a false apostle. Then why'd they call him beloved? <laughs> See, these people, all they're, they're banking on you. More ways than one banking on you. Um... They're thinking that you're not reading the Word of God. If you're not firmly grounded in this King James Bible, they'll get you. Oh, the new versions say the same thing. The new versions come from the Vatican. This one does not come from the Vatican. The Vatican has hated this book, this blessed King James Bible. You better get the right Bible. Go into battle with these people. You need a sword, not a plastic butter knife. Verse 25, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also teach you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to, lay, and to us to, to lay upon you no greater burden than the Noahide laws. Oh, wait, I, read, I read it wrong again. I'm trying to fit in be ecumenical. I'm trying to dialogue. <laughs> uh, no greater burden than these necessary things. What is it? That ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well, fare ye well. <laughs> well, um, wait a second. That can't be right. Uh, <clears throat> Let me go back to the Jesuit article there. It was only four things. What about the positive injunction to set up courts that justly enforce social laws? Um, hmm. It's not there. Christians can be involved in politics, don't get me wrong, but to say that we need to have some sort of a, a religious political system, I've tried to work that thing out in my head. I've wanted for years to be a dictator. Just take over this country and set things straight. And I think, okay, if I tried to do that, um, how would it work out with this group and that group and that group? Would I be tempted to take too much control and just be executing people? And you know, probably, and you know, it, no, <laughs> I can't be a dictator. Wouldn't work. Um, it'd be a lot of death because a lot of people would oppose me, and they'd probably try to assassinate me and whatever. So you know, okay, maybe on a lower level or something, fine. But uh, and at some point in time, maybe, you know, you could have a Christian king. People would, be, would have been more, you know, submissive to biblical type of concepts. But now, you try to take over, oh, there'd be lots of killing. If you tried to have a religious leader trying to take over the world, and all the world worshipping the beast, hmm, that he would probably cause a lot of people to be killed if a religious guy came to power and combined religion and politics together. <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. Go to John chapter 1. Verse 
John chapter 1. Oh, he's so sarcastic. Brian, you don't have to be so sarcastic. You're not smiling again. Oh, no. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I want you to come away from my sermon understanding exactly what I was saying. I want you to know which side I'm on. That's why I say what I say. And if you're a Bible believer, you know, you understand my sense of humor. You think the same way. It's a sarcastic sense of humor. But where did this thing of the law come from? Are there any scriptures at all saying that the law somehow came from Noah, that's in the Gentiles? There's a law for Gentiles, and then there's a law for Jews. Is that what the Bible teaches? No. John chapter 1, verse 1, some of the greatest things proving that Jesus Christ is God. Greatest scriptures on that. The book of John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So well, wait, that's a contradiction. How could you be God and yet with God? Uh, body, soul, spirit. The Godhead can separate. So in that sense, the body is not the soul. The soul is not the spirit. Okay, They are three separate things. They can be separate, but then they come together as one being. That's why it's, the word can be with God and God at the same time. It's a great mystery. See, if you're great as a mystery of godliness, if you're not saved, you won't get it. This is a spiritual thing that I'm trying to tell you. Verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Talking about Jesus Christ. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I don't understand this Godhead doctrine stuff. Well, then you're in darkness. And you can come out of that. You can come to the light. You can study it. Again, I wrote my book right here. Buy it. You don't have to. Whatever else. But it puts together the scriptures and the arguments for the Godhead doctrine and answering a lot of the Trinitarian objections and also the nonsense of modalism. <clears throat> Verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Talking about John the Baptist. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Huh? Um, no, the Noahide laws are there. Um, no, actually, it's Jesus Christ that lighteth every man that comes into the world. Your conscience that you know between you know the right and wrong and, and whatever comes from Jesus. Hmm. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to the Jews. That's why I don't hate the Jewish people. Not at all. They're still there. Jesus was a Jew when he came to the earth. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that follow the Noahide law. No, it doesn't say that. It says, even to them that believe on his name. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Why do you think the Jews are going around saying Hashem? Hebrew for the name. I have a whole study coming up on that, just to destroy that whole satanic nonsense you know what the name is the name is jesus christ verse 13 which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god if you're born again it comes from god he is the one that leads you brings you in shows you the truth and it's up to you to believe and call upon him to be saved ask god to save you believe his word verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ existed before, by the way, as the angel of God. Jesus Christ has always had a body. But the whole point is, he comes down, it was an incorruptible body as the angel of the Lord. He comes in and says, okay, a body has thou prepared me. We're going to make this body, and I'm going to be born as a little baby in the Virgin Mary. And I'm going to grow up. And I'm going to die on the cross as the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice to take away your sins and my sins. But I can do better by keeping Noahide laws. I don't think so. Verse 15, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, 
This was he of whom I spake, He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. Look at verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, not Noah, not Adam and Eve. It was there before, whatever. No. Verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God gives you light. He gives you a conscience. But he records the law there with Moses. There's not one mention of any kind of law coming through Noah. That's how you know that this whole Noahide thing is satanic. It's adding to the scriptures, just like the Roman Catholics do with their traditions of men, their catechism, like that. Slipped out of my hand. Just terrible. Um, so the law came by Moses. All right. Go to Romans chapter 10. It's about the Bible. Jesus Christ, personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the Word of God. That's all that you need. You don't need me. You don't need to come and become a Denlingerite and be part of my holy church and whatever and wear flannel and you know have a beard or something. You don't need to do that. I'm pointing you to Jesus Christ. That's the good news, the gospel. Right here it is. Romans chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. It's my prayer. I don't hate the Jewish people. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Where does knowledge come from? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God says in his word that you're not to add to the scriptures. If you fear God, you won't add to the scriptures. If you don't fear God, you'll say, well, we'll have the catechism. We'll have the um, Quran. We'll have the Talmud. Hmm. The three big religions. Roman Catholicism, Judaism, and Islam. And they all added. They all reject the New Testament. I mean, the Catholics, they reject the teachings. You, you know, you're not going to find a pope or celibate priests or nuns or monks or sacraments or Eucharist or whatever else, your auricular confession. You don't find any of that stuff for cathedrals. That's not in the New Testament. So the Catholics, they will say, well, we, we believe in Jesus, but, you know, they reject the what they were doing in the New Testament there, um, which I proved in one of my other studies. But it's funny. All three add to the scriptures. You get to the, the Bible's completed, and they say, well, okay, we'll look at the Bible, but We'll add the Quran. We'll add the Talmud. We'll add the Catechism. Mm -hmm. Pretty bad. <clears throat> Verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Huh. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Not Noah. There's no Noahide thing here. Notice that the Torah there is for all people. Not just, you know, Torah observant Jews or whatever else. No, you will be condemned by the law. If uh, you're the most pagan Gentile out there, they know thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not kill. Both are spoken of in the King James Bible. You know, and all the other things. People know. It's written in their heart. There's no Noahide laws out there. You don't need it. Okay. Um, verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Hmm. Roman Catholic uh, Eucharist? You take the wafer and the wine and you turn it into the actual blood and, and uh, flesh of Jesus Christ? Jesus is up there in heaven and, oh, yeah, the Catholics need me again. I'll, I'll go down and, and get into the cookie and, you know, then they can eat me. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. Verse 7, Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? 
The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's why a lot of the Jews reject Jesus right now, by the way. Because uh, it would cost them a lot. Their families would, you know, disinherit them and, and they would be treated poorly. And they might even be kicked out of Israel and things. And, and um, I mean, there are saved Jews in Israel, I believe that. But, you know, there, there could be some bad things. Yeah, welcome to Christianity. It happens to all of us, Gentile and Jew. Look at verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Well, that Al, how can we have that? How can we keep you safe and protect you and provide for you if there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek? Jews and Gentiles are the same in God's sight. God's no respecter of persons. Jews have an advantage because they can relate to the book, to the Old Testament. They can say, hey, that's my story. That's one of my ancestors right there. If they haven't mingled themselves, you know, with every other race out there. So Jews do have an advantage. But when it comes to salvation, you Jews out there, you're just as dirty and filthy as a sinner as I am. You need Jesus Christ. You can't live by a bunch of laws and a bunch of ways and they're, they're nice and kind of natural law and, and, you know, we can be good people and God will take us to heaven because we're good people. No. Your righteousness better come from God. And the law that's written in your heart that Jesus Christ put there, that law convicts you that you're a sinner. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A bunch of satanic false prophets right now on YouTube. I've been kicking them for years. Robert Breaker's one of them. And... Um, there's a couple others, but Robert Breaker is one of the big ones that's in, falsely inflated his channel. He doesn't have 700,000 some subscribers. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He admitted to it. And YouTube looks the other way for some reason. Um, you know, it's illegal to, you know, falsely inflate the numbers on your channel, but he did it and he gets away with it. And YouTube just says, oh, we don't see anything. Um, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And again, you know, oh, he's, no, he's reached that many subscribers. You're jealous. Of whatever. Okay. Show the silver play button. You get that when you get to 100,000 subscribers. I challenged Breaker on that and Gene Kim both. They're both frauds. And I challenged them and said, okay, show it. And see, they both claim to be Bible-believing Christians. So they're making us Bible believers look bad because they're coming out and they're lying and they're deceiving people and saying, I'm a Christian. I got here through, you know, extortion, but um, I'm a good person. No, you're not. But getting back to what I was saying here, Robert Breaker teaches that there's no such thing as calling upon the Lord. You just believe. That's Gnosticism. He's preaching a Gnostic gospel. You believe in the blood. <laughs> okay. The guy's a nut. Again, plenty of studies out there. And he you know, came out for you know, one thing and he was teaching that Jesus committed suicide. Jesus killed himself. And I exposed it. Now, oh, well, you know, and he took the video down quickly. And, mm -hmm. and he said scores of other heresies. The guy's a total fraud. So if you're following Robert Breaker, stop. You can watch my videos on it if you want to see the proof, but take advice from a, a man that's been preaching for a long time. Um, he's a fraud. Anybody that can read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, and come away saying you don't have to call upon the Lord with your mouth. Um, they're getting you to reject what's clearly written in front of you. Um, Paul wrote about how that he marveled that they are so, that they're, removed from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus unto another gospel. That's what it is. These guys are preaching another gospel that say you don't have to call upon the Lord to be saved. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like I've said many times, if you have a fire, if a fire breaks out in my house here and I can't control it, I'm going to call upon 911. Call upon the fire department. I don't just stay here and go, I believe they'll come. <laughs> uh, no, you have to call. You believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. You believe the word of God, the scriptures, but you call upon the Lord to be saved. Pretty easy to figure it out, unless you're lost. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled 
the law. Oh, no man, anything. How does that work out for you if you're papal, Juden? You're one of these guys that gets into usury and whatever else, and the banking system and the stock market and all that other stuff. How do you do that? You following the laws, are you? You know, when uh, the, the Noahide denim sub laws right here, which I'll show here in a little while, um, it actually condemns unjust weights and measures, usury in other words. But they want you to do it. Bunch of hypocrites. But look at verse 9. Oh, the Ten Commandments aren't for us. The Torah is not for us and whatever. Oh, not all of it. The Sabbath day is given as a sign between God and the nation of Israel. Uh, that's there. I have a whole study proving that. All right, That one you don't have to keep. You can worship the Lord on Saturday. That's fine. Absolutely. But you don't have to. Let me show you. Verse 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm. Thou shalt not covet. I wonder why that one's not in the uh, <clears throat> Noahide laws. I don't see it. Social laws, blasphemy, idolatry, sexual immorality, murder, theft, uh, eating the limb of a live animal. Not a word about covetousness. Well, that's convenient, isn't it? For these Talmud Jews. We'll just kind of leave that part about covetousness out. You know, so <laughs> forget that one. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love. Hmm. No, you better keep the Noahide laws or, or you're an immoral heathen and we'll cut your head off with a sword. <laughs> yes, sir. God's behind that movement. I don't think so. Yeah, atheists out there, if you're watching, I know that some of you watch me more for entertainment than anything else. Hi. Um, understand what I'm trying to advocate here. Understand I'm trying to keep you free and keep you alive. The religious fanatics that have done all the killing down through the centuries, I'm fighting against them. Think about that. Let's go next to um, Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, to all the anti-Semites out there. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Huh. Paul's writing about the nation of Israel and the Jewish people, and he says, it's by grace. It's no more of works. Don't worry about keeping the 613 Torah observant blah, 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 blah commandments. And don't worry about the Noahide laws. It's by grace that you're saved. Otherwise, grace is no more grace, but if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. They're blinded right now as a people. Not all. There are some Jews that are saved. Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, and that, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. Okay? You say, oh, see how it's such an anti-Semitic book. Uh, actually, no, he's quoting the Old Testament. <laughs> I 
that's one of the things I love too. You know, we're we're Jews and we're going to ban the New Testament because it's a Jew hate book. Have you read the Old Testament? <laughs> I think it's a little bit rough on the Jews back there in the Old Testament too. Uh, there was a lot of times that the Jews were killed by God, you know, or by each other. Look at the wars between Israel and Judah and, you know, not exactly a very friendly book to the Jewish people if you want to talk about being persecuted and whatever. But David here is the one that's writing those things about the Jews. King David. Verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, or through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Hi, my name is Brian Denlinger. I am a Northern European, completely 100%. My blood is completely Northern European, not mingled. My sister went and had a, G a DNA test done and whatever else, my blood sister, you know, and um, it's primarily German, some Swiss and Scottish Highlander, Campbell clan. Uh, that's my ancestry. And it goes back many generations that way, 10 or more generations back, proving it. I don't have any Jewish blood in me. I'm a Gentile, 100% Gentile, okay? Um, and you know what? To you Jews out there that reject Jesus Christ, I have a personal relationship with God. I talk to him on a daily basis. He saved me by dying on the cross and shedding his precious blood, and his blood's washed away all my sins. I don't have to try to think about, is there an animal sacrifice I need to do, or have I been good enough today, or whatever else. All I can do is just break fellowship with the Lord and lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. That's the worst that can happen to me. I am eternally secure, sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And I don't need to carry around a bunch of big Torah scrolls or whatever else and, you know, and go over to a wall and, you know, do the thing to the wall and, you know, Fort Antonio wall and slip a little piece of paper. I don't need to do all that stuff. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I have the perfect word of God in my language, the King James Bible. Greatest book that ever showed up on this earth. And I have lived this book Put this book into practice. Nobody's taking it from me. Oh, it has errors in it. You don't know what you're talking about. I can prove that this book is perfect with my life. And I can prove it because of all the viewers that are out there that also live by this book. You bear witness. We have a spirit of fellowship that the people you don't know anything about. Oh, you're just a Gentile. You're not a Torah. Oh, honey. You're so far below what we are as Christians, so far out of fellowship with your rabbinical Talmudic tradition garbage, okay? You're not even close. <laughs> you think that you're getting into the millennial kingdom? You are sorely mistaken. You are headed for hell right now. I'd like to see you get saved. I would, but right now you're headed for hell. Why am I saying all this? To provoke you to jealousy. That's why. Galatians chapter 3. We'll go there next. This is an important study, so I'm just kind of take my time, go through the scriptures and explain things. I want people to understand it. It's extremely important. And the, the people that uh, don't watch the whole thing through and they can't stand all the scriptures and all the references and my sarcasm and all that stuff, um, Go back to watching other things or making baskets or stringing beads or, you know, whatever you do. Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? Speaking about the law of Moses. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Uh-oh. That just destroyed the whole Noahide concept. Read it again. Um, if... There had been a law given which could have given life. It gives you eternal life by following the Noahide laws. If that was true, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Self-righteousness, in other words. You would be the author of your salvation. That's why you know it's not true. 
But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Period. Romans 3.10 That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. What, in the law? No, believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith, not works. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Oh, well, we can make it, we'll work it out, this Noahide thing, we'll just, you know, at least till we get more power. We'll just work it out that you can, you know, be a Noahide and you can still have your faith. No, I'm no longer under a schoolmaster. And the law that I submit myself to is the law of God, the perfect law of God that converts the soul, the Ten, the ten Commandments. And Paul listed the ones for Gentiles in Romans chapter 13, verse 9. The ones that we're still supposed to keep. Okay, and you keep it because it's just natural. It's not keeping it to be saved. Understand that, what I'm saying here. All right. Um, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. His righteousness. The righteousness of God Almighty. It's imputed righteousness. So I don't have to work for my righteousness. Jesus Christ paid it all. I get his righteousness. It's imputed to me. My works don't mean anything in terms of me going to heaven or not. My works are only there for me to get rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What's it going to be? The Jesuit devils over here that say, become a Noahide, faithfully observe the seven Noahides, and you get a chance at going into the kingdom in the future. Or the righteousness of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. I'll take this one. Thank you very much. It's not because I want to live in wicked sin like the people out there, the Talmudic uh, Jews. They'd like to profess, oh, we have 600, 613 commandments you couldn't possibly understand because you're a <laughs> Gentile. Um, no, you, know, you don't understand these things. But uh, we do. Uh, we're, we'll protect you and keep you safe. And I look and I say, oh, well, it looks like you're violating a lot of laws there in the commandments of the Old Testament. Shut up, Gentile. <laughs> oh, boy. Revelation chapter 6. <laughs> I will not shut up. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. The Bible says here, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Huh, people that hold to the book and not to the uh, Talmudic traditions, specifically the Noahide laws. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Who's doing the killing? Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, verses 9 through 12. Let's read about that. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The Noahide Antichrist system that's coming. Verse 12. Now look at this. 
Here is the patience of the saints. Here are, they, here are they that keep the commandments of Noah. No, it doesn't say that. It says commandments of God. And the faith of Jesus. You mean to tell me the people that are being beheaded in the future, they're, being, they're dying for the word of God, the scriptures, and the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus? What about the Noahide laws? No, that's actually the, what's being used by the Antichrist to put these people to death. You know why? Because the Noahide laws have no basis in Scripture. And they're not the commandments of God. They're a bunch of satanic added traditions of men that the Pharisaical Talmudic Jews of today have put out there. And if you don't follow it, well, then you'll have to die. whose damnation is just. Revelation chapter 20. Turn to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. How are they killed? How are these people put to death? Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. With Christ a thousand years. Always remember that. It's the simplest way to prove a premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus is here for the thousand years. All right. He sets up his kingdom. It's not that the kingdom is just there. Everything happened in the first century. And it, we're just kind of symbolically floating through the, you know, the kingdom. No. It's not amillennial. It's not postmillennial. The church brings in this kingdom or something and Jesus shows up at the end. No, it's premillennial. It's such an easy thing. There's no debate. Lives and reigns with Christ a thousand years. Okay, Jesus Christ comes down. It doesn't say he goes back up. He comes down in Revelation chapter 19 and he doesn't go back up again until the end of the book of, or the end of, the book of uh, chapter 20. Excuse me. Okay, <laughs> he goes to the beloved city. The whole world comes up to the city to see the king, you know. You study the whole premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. Very important to understand that. But notice what it said. That they are beheaded for the witness of Jesus, faith of Jesus, in other words, and for the word of God. So, what is this whole, all this junk right here? What's it all about? The Noahide laws. It's about getting you away from the word of God. It's Talmudic traditions is what that stuff is. That's what's going on. Either you accept our traditions of men, our Talmud, or we'll put you to death. See, so anybody comes out and they say, well, the, the Noahide laws have their basis in Scripture. They're lying right to your face. There's no basis in Scripture for that whole system, this Noahide stuff. You say, well, it says, you know, that you're not to have, you're not to steal. and you're not, Yeah, that's the Ten Commandments. Okay. There's no thing of, well, it, we called it the Ten Commandments, but before it was called something else. You'll never find that in Scripture. Jesus Christ put that conscience in everybody that's born. He creates everybody with that conscience. The law is written in their hearts. Okay? And to do that and to show that, he's showing his power. Long before the Ten Commandments are ever written down by Moses, he says, hey, I've been doing this from the very beginning. That law is there. And he doesn't, if it, he wanted to call it Noahide laws or, the, you know, Adam and he, he would have said something. But the Bible doesn't say that. And so these wicked people come out and they add to Scripture. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I showed this earlier at the beginning, but um, the Noahide denim sub laws, right there they are. And it goes down through a whole bunch of these things. So you have the seven laws, but then you have the denim sub laws. All right. But it goes down through, and it's just kind of funny looking at the whole thing. Um, you know, there they actually have one against coveting, so it is in their whole thing. And it's in Mitzvah 26, verse 5 or something. Negative Mitzvah 20, 265, I'm sorry, not 26, verse 5. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. So they do talk about that, but it's in the denim. It's not one of the seven actual laws, Noahide laws and whatever. And again... Well, you see, they're, they're putting it in there. It's, it's in there. But they don't follow it. Um, uh, goes to down through her. Um, 
Yeah, number 13, against the use of false weights and measures. I'll put this stuff up on screen. Against the use of false weights and measures. Against the possession of false weights and measures. Um, the one, that one shall be exact in the use of weights and measures. They don't do that all, you know, they're just ripping people off, Gentiles and things, using usury. That's why they've been kicked out of nations. Again, there's Jewish rabbis admitting to this. I'm not being anti-Semitic or whatever else. I'm just stating historical facts here. They've been doing that for centuries. And, of course, you get to that last one, number 16, right there, uh, number 6. And then you get down to number 16, that the court is to administer the death penalty by the sword, i.e. decapitation, positive uh, mitzvah 226, um, Exodus chapter 21, verse 20, the sin shall surely be avenged. Okay, which doesn't say to put Gentiles to death because they're not keeping your silly little laws that you created. All right. Right there it is. Now let me show you some pictures from the actual noahide.org to show you that this is the Antichrist system that these people are trying to bring in. Let me show you here. Okay, first of all, we have the Institute of Noahide Code. All these different people there, you know. And um, then we'll go to the next one here. Global Initiatives. Bridging Cultures, Building Peace, Religious Diplomacy, United Nations, all tied in with the UN, U.S. State Department of Foreign Service, respect the other conferences, education. Uh, respect the other does not mean that they respect Bible-believing Christians. They're planning to put us to death. All right. And, of course, you get all the integration stuff going on there in the photo. And then, of course, empowering together, inspiring change. How much do you want to bet that there's some Masonic handshakes going on there in, that, in the middle there? And the Jewish rabbi there is just grinning and putting his hand over top of it all, just kind of, uh, you know, brothers, just let's not let's not show too much here. Let's <laughs> let's just uh, not, you know, expose ourselves completely. All right, one more place to go to, and then that'll be it for this study. First John chapter four. First John chapter four in your King James Bible. Very important scripture especially in relation to this subject. <clears throat> First John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Get the is there. So many people will change it to has. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Yes, it is. We've read about it all throughout the study. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. This study was one of the most, the greatest blessings to me as I was going through it. Um, just like the Lord was right beside me. The Holy Spirit of God just directing me to these different scriptures and tying this whole thing together and realizing this is the Antichrist system. These people have rejected you, Lord. You, they rejected you as, as their Messiah. And now they're going to bring in their own Messiah. They want their Messiah to show up. And when he does, they'll be worshiping Satan in the flesh, the Antichrist. And for all you, you know, historicist, preterist, you know, fools out there, and you are fools, I have a cause to call you that. Um, what do you do when you see all these things coming to pass? pointing towards the book of Revelation being yet out into the future. If it already happened in the past. It didn't happen in the past. You better wake up. I warn people, it's my job. That's what I do. If you want a, a nice little sermon with a nice little hireling that smiles at you and tells you that God has a special plan for you today. And, and uh, you know, as long as you you know, give plenty of money to our corporation to keep us in business. God will do amazing things for you. 
God wants you to have a wonderful marriage, and he wants to have children that, are, that fit in good with the world and are popular and everything else. And God wants you to have, look like the world and, and listen to the world's music and, and just, you know, I won't say anything negative to you. If you want that, then there's pl plenty, plenty of those hirelings out there. Go listen to them. All right? That's not me. So, um, you know, it just gets right down to that whole thing, brethren. He that is of God will understand these things. And you'll notice that most professing Christians do not understand, and they don't want to understand, and they get mad at you for talking about it. Why? Because they're not of God. Very simple. So, um, I will be standing very radically in opposition to the Noahide scam these laws and whatever else they're not based in the scriptures they're based on the talmud um the talmud that hates jesus christ the talmud that that uh talks about persecuting christians and things that was written hundreds of years after the new testament was you know finished <laughs> johnny come lately <laughs> oh we're the jews we go the whole way back uh your modern system no you don't uh the talmudic jews and whatever else uh you're you're about uh, the same age as uh, all the other cults out there like Islam and Roman Catholicism. Uh, right in that same time period when you people had rejected Jesus Christ and you saw that Jesus had rejected you. And so you go out and you wage your wars and, and have all your you know, killing and murders and usury and all the other things that you do to promote your system. And you all hate each other and everything else. <laughs> what a bunch of wicked nonsense. So um, that's going to be it for this study. I do hope you've learned some things. I do hope I've challenged you. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers. Brethren, uh, oh, Brother Brian, please be careful that you're dealing with dangerous people. Um, I fear God, and I don't fear man. Um, this channel will be around as long as God wants it to be around. And when God says, okay, Brian, you've done your work, um, then this channel goes away. Just that simple. Uh, what if they come here and they threaten me, you know, one of these three groups or something? doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I've gotten through a lot of really hard, very painful times, and, and um, <clears throat> I'm not worried about it. Not worried about death, quite frankly. Um, I'm going to preach the truth, no matter what it costs me. So that will be it. See you in the next study.